Okay, welcome back now for pose number two and foreshortening. So we're going to be dealing now with the image here. Canini here um, popped up here. What's nice about this particular pose or what makes it challenging to get to those, those um, words of frustration, right, that you'd want to scream out is the, the worm's eye view. So we're looking very much up at the model in this case and uh, that makes it you know, particularly difficult. Also, uh, you know, when you're setting up model poses, this is a tough one to get in a figure model class because everybody has to get close to the model and then look up and then you have the, the genitalia right in where you really don't want it in your face there. So you kind of have to be careful there um, if you're setting up model poses. So sometimes it's good to look at, a lot of times actually, it's good to look at art historical references or if you do have a model pose like this and you want it more extreme for shortening, like three-point here, you could just put a, um, a pair of shorts on uh, your model, male or female, to help out with that. That will help tremendously. Just, just something to think about, too, as well. All right, here we go. So um, we're going to be working now with this, this pose here, and let's start to kind of feel where we want the figure. This time I'm working in Carbothello. A little bit softer pencil um, and it kind of prohibits too much detail which I think will be good and then I'm gonna uh, make this drawing a little bit bigger and we'll just uh, help try to expedite the um, amount of time to keep it a little bit uh, less time as we go through here so first things I look at we're gonna work through gesture hands a little just slightly higher right moving through the figure trying to find where I want this composition to flow head maybe somewhere right in through here as he moves downward to the pelvic region roughly in through here almost kind of straight across in terms of the gesture then we get some extreme now for shortening with the leg knee to knee here <clears throat> this knee much 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 higher as we see that okay coming through here and then over to the leg and then most of the foot gets cut off here because of the apparatus, which we'll, we'll include that just a little bit. Later knee here and through. Okay. <clears throat> What's interesting, the hips are pretty straight across and then we also get the movement now from to into the shoulder here, which are fairly, ironically, fairly straight across. A little bit of a curve. Maybe the right is a little bit higher. I got flying here. My studio somehow in through here and over so we mark that start marking the gesture of the arm hands and arm coming through here roughly in this region okay and then upward okay looking at elbow to elbow bony landmark coming through and then hand up and over through here okay up and higher and now we've got the head coming through neck over and I'll mark the chin roughly for now we can adjust as we need pushing that head greatly back here's the center line the head in through there pushing that head over right in through here creating that jaw going way back in space and then we have a side plane of our head roughly right in through there to keep that keep that pretty pretty light as we go forward. So here's our gesture as we move through. Now this apparatus here, <clears throat> roughly I'll go ahead and put it in. It's got a nice angle to it here. Something along this line and we can adjust it as we as we'll need later. <clears throat> there we go. So that's pretty much the lay-in with the composition. In that um, crazy uh, foreshortening that we're seeing, and through here, I can go ahead and get it maybe in through the uh, hand area too. Probably study for a painting, a mural, perhaps a Panini, 16th, excuse me, 17th century artist working in the 1600s. So um, Baroque, mostly Baroque era of art history. All right, here we go. So, you know, that's the same era as Caravaggio, Rembrandt. All right, so we're working now. 
coming through. We're going to feel this out. Now, with this kind of pose, you know, over here I'll draw some, some cylinders. What we're going to be looking at and getting is a lot of this. Okay, so a lot of uptick and turn. Okay, and we're looking now at a cylinder, okay, up to it, up inside, it. not down on, but up to. So this whole area, right in through here, especially where this little turn I'm making here, the abdomen, right there, kind of where the belly button is, see that? You see how these all curve here? Even see how the eye line right here of the face is a curve. That nose line, see how high that nose is, where the nose position will go, all relates to this, doesn't it? Because we're looking up to. So we're down here looking up to the uh, figure there. So that's important to keep in mind. Now, so as we get started here working on the structure, okay, we'll find kind of the midsection of the pubic region in through here. Gonna find those hips across. Come all the way over. Boom. Find those hips across. And see there our gesture here. Find that knee. That knee wants to angle this way. Now we've got an interesting problem here. Now we've got a lot of like this tube a little bit. So let's take off of this leg. Okay. Let's start to pop that in and over. You can see that coming through. So we've got a nice bulge of this thigh muscle here. And then we'll come back over and through in around. Okay, coming through and over. <clears throat> and then we're going to come back and catch that back of the thigh, that biceps femoris area into here and then come across and then this is overlapped now, again, by the knee. So here's the top of the knee, roughly right in through here. And it gets a little square. Now we've got a little muscle forming through here, the sartorius area, coming down, okay? So we get this knee here, right in through here, coming over. A little bit more square at the top, so we feel this over like that. Then we can come down and say, okay, there's that knee now. So we've got that. <clears throat> now, so I can tell already that I'm going to have to lift up this apparatus here. You can tell that. So this is going to be moved up probably to there, which is no big deal. Because we always want to adjust according to our corrections. So here's the flow of the tibia fibia, okay, right through here and downward getting that calf, it's kind of angular, and then we'll round out that calf, roughly coming right in through, in through here, that's a strong axis line where the widths are, and then right in through here we get the calf, right, and then it disappears, and it's probably right where I had it there that second time. So, we have that, and then we come on down with the rest of the leg, okay, Tendon running through there, connecting in the over calf. And so now I'm going to change that. Just take that kind of smudge it out of the way. Or take my eraser. Since it's chalky, it's pretty easy to come up. It's like charcoal, just kind of like colored chalk. These Carbothello pencils are really nice. So that's kind of where that angle will be. So that's how far I missed it. Right there, okay. Now, see how this knee here, this patella region, and through here, the side of that's kind of a square, okay? And these condyles, see how this, this thigh goes underneath? You really don't see that that often unless you're foreshortened. That's pretty amazing. Okay, I'm trying to turn this around a little bit, running through there, a little bit of right core shadow through there, and around if you want. You can just push that back, it's okay. So that leg. Then we're going to start working now the other leg, other side and through here, genitalia through here. Kind of an oval form. Right in through here. <clears throat> and then the tube of the 
other part here, penis part. And through here, just a tube, simple cylinder. There we go. And through there. No big deal. And the other turn, upturn of the belly, just a little bit. Now let's grab this other side. So we have here to here, so we can come over here. <clears throat> And sort of slot me to tilt. Now we can grab this leg. Now let's dust this knee. Knee to knee in terms of our gesture. Gesture flow down right to here. We have that. And coming on down. Right in through. <clears throat> so we'll adjust that knee where we want to go to as well. Nice and bulky cylinder head. Right in through here. Okay, kind of like this top around the model. Around here. Yeah. <clears throat> and then we'll come down, nice and bulky out here, and then coming down and crashing into about that patella region, running through there, and then we'll get the, come to the other side here, it's pretty much overlapped, right in through there, okay. <clears throat> So now working in through here, coming over, judging through here, and getting this tube. So as we're working in through here, this area of the composition opens up a little bit like a tube here, right? So that's what I'm seeing that this closes because we're up high looking at it. So we get a little bit of secondary muscle tone for this region of the rectus femoris and then the Sartorius coming in through here, right? So we get that. <clears throat> Keep this clean. <clears throat> so we have that working for us. This is a little bit more rounded in through here. There we go, coming through. So we want to feel that. We want to feel this coming in through here now and over and around. Okay, feel this secondary pull. Okay, right in through there. <clears throat> All right, right in through here, coming up and over to the knee. <clears throat> and we'll fill that patella region right in through there. Okay. <clears throat> coming over now to find that lower calf now. Now we're going to get this overlap, so we're going to get this oval, large oval underneath and through here, a little bit lower with the patella, right in through there too. There we go. Coming up and down around, and then we're going to get this pulling out of here. The very top bulky part of that calf as it starts to come on down and through. Then we get all this around here. We don't even get to the thickness of the calf over here until about right there because we get some of this over here, right? <clears throat> and we get this pull through here, get a little, get a little extra shading if we want through here. So we've got this really bulky thigh. I love that. I love that kind of quality. As we, as we go along, so we can pull all this in shadow shape here. Right in through there, and we can pull a little bit of core shadow, too, as well. <clears throat> so we've got a nice little uh, perspective system starting to turn and develop here, coming through and over, okay. <clears throat> the patellar heading through there. Okay, and through here. And then we're gonna come down, and we're gonna find a little bit of this head down of the gastrocnemius of the calf, the medial head there. Okay, right in through there. <clears throat> Keep that drawing as clean as you can if you're working in more of a chalky substance through. Okay. <clears throat> and then we've got a little bit of the foot, don't we, emerging. So this will come down 
but the foot will start to emerge here, okay, and then back up and over. I'll just leave it simply kind of a block in there for now, so we'll have that. But you get a little bit of that foot, so if we catch seeing underneath that, we definitely see the bottom of that foot with them for sure. All right, so let's tighten up these leg areas coming through. Here we've got this bulkiness that wants to emerge right in through there. There we go. We've got that patella region. Get a little bit more of that top coming through. We're going to push that back. There we go. And then we can start to push this around a little bit. Okay. Right in through there. Just keep that simple. <clears throat> take that bolt because this wants to turn in now right in through here by this adductor area rectus femoris and then this artorias coming through and then we'll come back in and then we're going to indent here right this is starting to the oblique area okay right up in through here pretty fascinating little turn this is where you get it's a, it's a fun uh, perspective now and it's going to correlate to what we're seeing off this cylinder, especially here, right, and here, because we're going to get this turn. It can't be straight across, so we're going to get a lot of this area here where the belly is right in through here. And turning that over, we'll keep this barrel simple. And I might even have to pull him in a little bit too as well, even, even like I did last time. So that's how challenging that can be and actually fun that can be too as well. So right in through here underneath, we see this here, okay? Starting the lats, okay, right in through and over, through, and across where the nipple's gonna be, right, in, right about in through there. So we're close, pretty close. I might just adjust a little bit off that, not too bad. Right in through there. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got this barrel now working for us, this idea of the barrel. See that? Or the cylinder. Very important in our composition there for sure. All right, so now continuing on, we'll come through here. I'll pull that sternum down a little bit to about right in through there. Now that's going to pull his neck, so this head is going to come down now, so we'll pull the head down a little bit nicely in through here. Remember, gesture is always a guess and estimation. You have to have the right to change it as you move through the neck, okay? Through here, jawline coming up and through to the chin, a little bit lower here, okay? Head pulling back now, so we have the head pull back in through here, and it's, of course, it's going to be later on covered up by those shoulders. So we can put in through here, deltoid. The shoulders will be roughly here. Coming through and back, right in through there, and over, okay? Other deltoid, now in through here. So now we can get a better feel for that arm coming through. Comes out a little bit, doesn't it? Right in through there. So we can take that on. <clears throat> okay, then we have the elbow up to our hand in through here, and the hand just barely above the head, not too, not too bad, and through, gesture for that hand, over, and gesture this, each finger just a touch to keep it, keep it like so. And we'll go and pick apart this deltoid a little, a little further, coming through and over, okay. Back through the arm now, the arm region, coming over, <clears throat> finding that elbow, finding the tube of the arm. There's our tube. <clears throat> right through here, okay. Then we'll come across and over to find that form, really bulky, kind of an idea, right in through here. And then we have another overlap. Of the, of the lower forearm extensors and flexors and through here and over. 
So we're pretty close to where that hand was, right? And through here, and then we get the hand itself proper over pretty close to where we had that lean in. That lean in will probably be about right in through there. So I'll take that out and adjust as per needed. Maybe a little bit more of an angle too. It'll be about right in through here. <clears throat> So I'm looking at this negative space down here and adjusting too as well. So probably about right in through there. There we go. I don't want it to be a tonal drawing too much, but we'll put a little on there. <clears throat> okay. So chalk is a, a more difficult medium to control. It's very soft in that white paper. Here, just separate this vastus medialis and rectus from mars here just a little bit further. There we go. And then right down and through here. It's amazing how far down that cap will start to hug and hang right in through there. Alright, so our next step. Coming down as we've made some, I think, uh, appropriate adjustments. Let's start working this chest region. So I'm going to look for the sternal notch right in through here. I see our fly is making another appearance. I'm going to leave him. I don't want to kill him. Right through there. Be kind. Through here, and then we make our neck in through here. We'll take care of the head just a little, just a little bit. Through here, neck, and through here, the back of the neck roughly right in through here where that head is and hair will be right in through there. So let's take great pains here to come down, find the end right right about there is the end of the sternum. So the rib cage is roughly, it's good to, to have that. So it's overturned barrel that's going to come back over. Now it's pretty muscular with the rectus abdominis and the, the obliques and the lats are pretty full. So we're not going to get into all that. Let's don't go crazy. It'll take us a, a while, but we want to do enough structure in through here, because so we get this overlap, okay? Then we get this coming over where the lat is there, so we get the oblique in through, and then we get that lat coming in through here, as so we want to turn back to now the head in this region. And then we'll get back to that underarm in a moment. <clears throat> we can put some time in here for one. <clears throat> so let's now <clears throat> come across the form. This is important as we're drawing. This is a, a, a technique students just can't quite get in the beginning. It's my job to help them. Is this idea of coming across, not, not here drawing, along this line forever, but it's also feeling this idea of coming across the form and finding the other side, finding where that arm is going to be here, okay, making that known, okay, where the tricep is, bicep is here, right, through, but it's also coming and finding the other side on a tilt, right in through there. That's important to get this connection and this connection. That's what I'm saying, right in through there, because we're getting a little bit of the lat behind it, right in through there, okay? Are you still with me? Good. Right through there, we'll get a little bit more of that, and we'll get some. This drawing is really a wonderful study, and it's beautiful, chalky, Cross contour lines that would take forever to get. We're not going to do that. So, <clears throat> so now as we work across the form, we've de delineated this a little bit. We can come over a little, and then we get this underneath here, and then we get down to where our big his big curved idea was for the belly. And you're bleaking through here, and then we can start to say, okay, now. We've got this, this sort of rolling here, 
Here's our center. To here we've got that belly button that we definitely can't see because it's under turn, but we get a little bit of shadow in through here, don't we? Then we come back over and we connect that this curve, under curve, curve, curve back over idea through. And these are just the rectus femoris muscles in all of their flexed glory, probably over flex. And that was a condition of the Renaissance, early Renaissance. Um, Uccello, uh, Palaiolo would uh, overemphasize muscle form, and it was kind of a study of science too as well. So, very some of that through here. All right. <clears throat> now coming back over, we see back over and through here, we can start to get this form, this overturn now of where the crest is. And that's where that light is, right in through here. And around, and we get this undertone. Of course, we get a cast shadow to where the testicle is, right in through here a little bit. And through. <clears throat> So we're getting this light situation that we're reading, probably erased out a little bit and softened with a stump or a finger. <clears throat> there we go. All right, so, so we're working with that major change. Now the next one I'll see, right in through here, this is slightly lower than the nipples. The nipples are right, okay, here, roughly to here, okay. We're kind of where his nipple, this right one, kind of where his eyeball is roughly in here, right head, probably a little disappearing in through there, kind of right eye socket to right nipple. That's going to help a little bit. Roughly in here, okay, slightly above the arm, pit, roughly in there, and then the other one just about straight across, maybe leaning a little bit, but pointing out in this direction, about right in through, right in through there, okay. All right, so now we're going to come over and work these pectorals, our next part of our, our uh, chest in through here. In through here and over, it gets covered, okay, right in through there. And then we have a pull that pectoral with that bicep, right in this crease with the deltoid, the bicep, and the pectoral come together. It's a pretty wicked little, little area with the deltoid covering all of it up, total on the high point, and then through there, okay, let me refresh the image, okay, there we go, <clears throat> so we get this cross, this is like a tube coming in, remember you're in extreme foreshortening, you know, drawing, so uh, some of it doesn't feel that way, which is pretty cool. Head of the bicep here, okay, breaking that down a little bit. Now we're going to shade this coming across and over the form, like so, okay, using that technique. Put a little dark there to say it's overlapped. Coming up to the clavicle, which are pretty bony, and right here is where that overlaps. Let me get this front up. Oh, broken pencil, of course. Right into here, a little darker, and then we get the deltoid back up through here too. The trapezius connection coming around from the back of that were. Okay, pull, 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 pull over and through there. And then we get the deltoid coming in. Now watch this. So remember our, our cylinder going a different direction, right? So now what we're going to get is we're going to get this pull over, okay, pulling, curving, seen that before, down. Now the, the bicep comes over and it boxes off, like so. See how it boxes? We get down now the tricep, right into here, that tricep head, right into there. But this whole system, right, is curved over like a bread box. Curve, 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 curve. 
head of the tricep, excuse me, bicep, and then sideways down, going down, okay? This is the lats, and then we get right in through here the pectoral. Okay, right in through there, then up the back end of the pectoral, okay, before it goes into the ridge underneath the humerus area as so it attaches there. And we get a little bit of this see here coming around. All right, so we have that tough one. This is tough, but fun, I hope. All right, shadow on the pectoral here. Okay, coming across. We've got to find its bottom. It's hard to see because it's in line. Right here, see what that line is above the nip, uh, below the nipple. Get a little bit areola of the nipple, right here, right there. That's the bottom of the tri uh, of the of the pectoral where the light is. This is barreling across, okay, down and in a little bit lower. They attach up a little bit higher, kind of like these bird wings. These little rib and pectoral sinew there. Then we're going to come across and over. And this is, we're on this, we're on this curve of the cylinder. Okay? And we're going to, whoops, and we're going to come across and over. It's very centrally lit. Then downward. Okay? So we have that really curving. It wants to curve in there. Come back and through, then this overlaps nicely. So probably a little long there, but it's okay. Especially the position I have to draw in. It's like I'm way far away for the camera. That's okay. All right, here. Curling that nipple just a little bit. Make this a little stronger. Running through. Okay, we're going to come back up in. There we go. Really strengthen in that dark line a little bit. Tight lines versus... Non-tight lines. Now we want to we want to finish out this a little bit. Belly button here. We've got a little bit of an extra belly line coming across very lightly here and over. Okay, right through the little tone on it to get us back over to the top part of the subway come downward. Right through there. Lats, rib cage, running right through here, part of the rib cage. And then these little muscles coming over, see how they come over? This is really important, the rectus abdominis right here. It's the end of the rectus abdominis, and really where the rib cage is. And these little bumps here and here are serratus interior. Right in through there. They're pretty subtle, subtle little little bumps, little doodads. If you don't know what they are, it's okay. I do. I'm supposed to get a little bit of a line. Go. I'm gonna go over this a little bit in black, just a little bit of black chalk in some areas to help out. Under here, <clears throat> and then we get over underneath that nipple and through here. Okay. that through and this line will tell us where the serratus interior and this, the rib cage cartilage section is and then we got enough of that I think all right so let's go on now to the uh, head and then we'll finish up with the hands region, and I can also add a little bit of chalk. So I'll show you what that does now, just in certain little areas, just to tighten it up. See that? Here, coming on through, and then down to where this hip really starts to pull out. This could come down a little bit further, right in through there, just to give it some emphasis under here, underneath this leg where he's gotten just a little bit. Gives us a little extra to work with. Then I can come back over. Mm -hmm. 
gives us just a little little finishing kick really round around the sound it helps me keep my gesture if I get a little stiff which is which is easy to do with foreshortening you've got to be careful of that it's tough not to do that will go in front so that gets a little bit darker line to do there all right so Let's take on the head. So coming through the neck. So we're coming lots of upturn with that cylinder. So lots of upturn here, center line from the neck through and over the head, running right through here. Okay. Notice how high up the nose is. Triangular nose now, but it's very, very high up across the head. <clears throat> So let's find the chin. Here's the throat. The throat is another little tube. Round it in through here, the windpipe, the esophageal region, like so. Pretty much a tube. There we go. Now we can come over and find the square area right in through here. Boom, there's your chin, maybe a little bit of an angle through here and then we'll come down very triangular kind of jaw pattern here <clears throat> and over curve that over you see that curving that jaw line here structurally right there and then over okay head right through there and then we'll start to take it watch this we don't see a whole lot we get to maybe the outer outer edge cheek slight bone zygomatic area of the cheek and tilt it over, and then we're going to start to push all this already in shadow. Right in through there. So we'll take that, <clears throat> start to work with it through here. Work that darken through just a little bit through here. <clears throat> So let's start to work now. So this chin, mental labial group is here. We don't get a whole lot of it left. And then we start to see this jaw. This is tough. This is hard drawing for anybody. Jawline coming all the way across to the other side of the jawline. Okay. So we're going to come up. I'm going to place the nose first before anything. Right in through here. Just a triangle. Curved bottom. Tip top. Coming off the head, just a little bit. I'm going to come over on this side and draw a little bit. So I can reach it right in through there. Just a tip of the, of the nose there. That's all we need. <clears throat> because we see the bulbous part. I'm not even going to take on the nostrils because it's so tiny. Don't worry about it. So tip of the nose. Coming over to part of the socket on the right side. <clears throat> right in through here and over. Coming in through. Down and then most of that now is just kind of curled hair. We'll leave that. It leaves that kind of loose, which is nice, simple. Jaw underneath the zygomatic arch. Right there. What you're seeing here on the head Lightwise is by beyond the nose, beyond the nose here. That's a cast shadow, and it's coming on the eye socket here, right there. And we see that, so we're getting that pretty well. And then we're going to get a little bit of the top lip, but it's really curved. It's like a inverted horseshoe, just curved, like so, curved downward. And then a little bit of the lower top lip, lower lip, cast shadow, and slide beyond there. And that's all you need. That's all you want. You don't want to fuss with that. Maybe just a little bit in here through the line. And we're good. This jaw might be a little high or low. There we go. Hard right in through there. Okay, get that throat coming up. Tough, tough place. But fun. Right, there we go. Okay.
right, so we got the head in there. Let's work now. I'm going to take a little dark, separate this part out. It's kind of need to do that last, just to separate these two. Okay, so now let's work on this arm. Okay, we've got this bicep coming back to it. Okay, turned over, top. It's nice and bulky out here. It's almost unnaturally bulky, but pretty muscular. We're just going to go with Canini, what Canini has. Look at the, the tricep head and the bicep head here together working. Really kind of bulky. And over, tendon coming down. In through here, then over and out. Really interesting array there. Okay, and we'll come through and get this lower arm. It has a tendency to get square in the Renaissance. Very interesting. I never see that on a natural model, but I do when I do master studies. Pretty fascinating. And through here, really square up kind of approach. Pantormo did that. Around and over. Okay, and through. We're going to come back underneath, and then now we've got this tube of the lower forearm where it starts to get extensors and flexors, and they get into tendons pretty quick. Okay, right into here. Get that lower level <coughs> through there. back, emphasizing this tube and our structure, okay, coming through the final push to the slack part of the hand, and through here, get to the blocky part of the wrist, and up, and now we start having our hand in through, coming just a little bit of the pad of the thenar grouping of the palm, outward palm, where the thumb is, and we're going to get this over knuckle condyle to the other other uh, outward side. Here we go. We got our thumb going and downward. Okay, so we're cooking there. <coughs> oh, throw on a little bit of a bit more shadow in through here, core shadow. There. Okay, now finally we'll come over to the other side in our foreshortening study. <clears throat> You'll start to put on a little bit of, uh, oops, that was the dark, wasn't it? That would have been a disaster. Not really. You know, eye socket, that dark eye socket, cast shadow right where that nipple is. Put a little bit of tone back here. Kind of integrated into the background of our study. And then you can take your needed eraser if you want to erase out a little bit of an area you thought was a little heavy. You can take it and do this. Dab out a little bit if you want. Take this. Take that. Or you can take your your um, Japanese mono type erasers with the stick type, which is a great thing to have. Take those out too as well. Come over a little bit. Get this part over here just a little bit further, just to make this work for us. Just to get some rhythm and movement going in that background too. It's all about hand stroking. Whatever you're comfortable with in your position. My positioning is awkward because, because of the camera. So, and I'm going to take this dark a little bit and just emphasize a few lines just to make sure this works for us. And through there. Over and around. Just to separate just that head just slightly. Here we go. 
go. All right, let's go for this hand over here. <clears throat> and arm, excuse me, too. So right in through here, so we have the bulky head. We've had our gesture, okay, we have our gesture in through here, and we have our elbow. It's so muscular, muscular, muscular that the elbow breaks off a little bit, the olecranon here, and it's rarity. This is so much lovely anatomy that's controlled and going on. And through and around, trapezius underneath, basically just a tube. Don't get scared from underarm and through here, bicep in through here, a little bit more between bone and bicep attachment through there. Forgot that name. <clears throat> a little bit of bicep that goes part of the extra goes to the scapula. <clears throat> okay, over there. Come across and tighten this up just a little bit. Dark. There we go. Right in through here. Then we get this head, the bicep. Okay, around. Let it go all the way around. Then coming through is this little tube. Right, the bone comes through, right in through here. Okay, and the muscle. Okay, and we get that little split of the bicep. Right in through there, and then we get break out, and then we get the tricep head. And right in through there, really soft, coming up and around. <clears throat> Put a little dark here. So this could be brought down lower. This negative space is a little high, but I'm not. I'm okay with it. So, so I make changes and adjustments in my interpretation all the time. It's okay. I'm not worried about worried about that. It's like this could be. This could be. Could, this could come down lower. Bring up this hip a little bit. But I'm okay with it. <clears throat> most of the most of the major foreshortening is, is covered pretty well. <clears throat> so we'll put a little tone here. Got that going. And I'll cut you out these edges a little bit. <clears throat> Get it right in through here where that light is on through in this region. Tighten that up a little bit underneath that nipple. Right into there. <clears throat> Go. <clears throat> Gonna pull this across. Always working on the love that contouring round. I love his long, gradual, controlled toning contour. <clears throat> So we've got that, that head going, we've got the elbow going, right in through here, breaking of from the bicep to the forearm. This bicep comes in front of, because it's got a tendon, it goes into the middle there to the to the ulna and radius area. Or to the radial area. Through. So now we're going to pick up this apart, catch back up this tube. Okay, run in through here, tube and the egg, remember that? Over here, okay. It's a little long, we're going to take that, bring that back a little bit. Here's that, here's actually where the wrist would go. Right in through there, so let's make sure we've got everything we need here. This will come in front, this will go behind, this will come around. Can use that dark to tighten things up too. Right into there. That's where we get that bulky bicep against that pectoral. Right there. I want that to pop out. And we want that light to come through here. One more time, I'll pull it out just in case we lose it. That underarm area. A bicep tendon, an extra bicep tendon is there. 
Okay. So egg form, right? There's the egg form. Right here. Coming through. And we'll get to the wrist, right? And through this blocky wrist. We get a little bit of this right through there. Coming down. Just taking this that form shadow. Seeing that, and then we're going to tighten up with the line. Here we go through and back over to the ulnar P there. Okay, then we're going to undercut this because we're seeing the under part of it. Around a little bit too, as well. <clears throat> that wrist right in through there. <clears throat> so I'm going to tighten this up a little bit down here. Sometimes I'll, I'll take a break and I'll check and I'll stop. Okay, right in through, right in through there, and around. <clears throat> and here. Okay, I'll put a little tin in between these. See that merge. Beautiful canini. Study for a painting. Whoops, broken pencil there. I think we've got two broken ones. Let's cut. Cut here. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. Okay, so beautiful canini, canini study here. <clears throat> Around, I'm just gonna fill this in as we go along. Notice I'll, I'll take breaks from very difficult areas so I can rest my brain a little bit. So I have to think through and talk through. You can, as you're falling, if you're falling along really fussy with me, you probably look a little confusing. Don't mean to be. <clears throat> so taking it in through here. Now I'm going to be having an overlap here. This lower part here. A little bit longer. It's okay. <clears throat> Alright, so coming over now to finish this arm in our study, I'm getting close to the to the end here mercifully. Alright, so now we'll come across the wrist here and we'll just gesture in the hand, thenar region of the palm. So see how I had to change ahead. This is my first gesture, that was my second, and here's my third to tighten things up a little bit. It's okay. It's okay to adjust where you're at, what you need, you always have to do that. So gesture is not exact, it's an approximation. It's your 
opening gambit to drawing. Thumb gesture, hand here, finger, finger, finger into there. So let me tighten up that area just a little bit. Okay. Coming around through and over to get that hand gesture onward. <clears throat> Palm split and through there. Take the back of the hand right in through there and coming up across. And we'll just take these gestural uh, shadings through here. Points. going to shade down this so here. I'm going to bring it together like a um, uh, volumetric hand and just put some shade together and just leave it as a sketch. So it's pretty far away from my my, um, my reach here. You can go to the hand section in anatomy and see all that pretty up close. There's no need for me to have to prove any more. There, and I'm going to put a little bit of shading. I'm going to come around here again to the other side. There we go. <clears throat> to get a little shading on this side. Let's push him in there. And so we've got. Pretty nice study going on with respect to uh, foreshortening, finishing out the study of foreshortening. You know, big tells are right in through here where that curve of the abdomen goes through. Very, very, very challenging, but very important. And that area through there to let that happen, come over, to give you that cylinder quality as we look up into. Canini's figure here. Let's tighten this little area up where I can get to it. Here and over and across. I hate to leave that hand kind of half done, but sorry about that. It's, just, it's hard enough to get over top of it. <clears throat> and we'll take a little bit of tone here. this edge nicely open through and around that comes through and get that tendon connection here it's important and over make sure we have that as this comes around and through into foreshortening and ultimate elongation as we look up underneath it which is pretty fascinating if you think about it. All right, I think we've got just about all the parts that we need now to finish. I'm going to do a little extra drawing here. I'm not going to narrate too much anymore. And you're welcome to leave the video or finish how you need to. I'm just going to put a little extra uh, time and make the drawing a little bit more malleable. Here's where I miss it the most, right in this negative space. Probably could have pushed that a little bit lower, but I'm okay with it for the most part. <clears throat> All right, so I will see you guys next time with the last of the foreshortened studies. This is number two.
guys take care.